Good morning, Elmira. Uh, to get a brief uh, introduction, I'm going to show a quick video here. Hi, my name is Chris Ratter. I'm a photographer. I'm for the USS Cleveland. I'm here with Project Hope, and we're here to help document the military and other non-governmental organizations and their efforts to help third world nations. A typical day kind of ranges about what I do. I do a lot of blogs. I love photographing, so you'll always see me around the ship with a camera in hand for the most part. I think this mission is very important, especially towards my photo work, is that I've always wanted to help people. I can be able to educate and be able to show people how others feel or interact in another country and bring those experiences through my photos back to the United States and then have someone be so inspired that they're going to go back and provide even more to those communities and hopefully it will cause a snowball effect to create a better good in that community. I have mad b-ball skills. Not really. <laughs> That's right, you'll never find me on the NCAA court uh, shooting three points. But thankfully, every so often, I do get to go photograph uh, Syracuse University covering their event. Actually, I just came back from the football game last night. Sad loss, unfortunately. One of these days. The one, but uh, I I always wanted to travel the world. I will remember sitting in Corning Community College. I was in uh, my class World Affairs with Walter Smith. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys ever had it, but it kind of was on a dull side. But in the other sense, was it was very energetic. Like I got to read the New York Times every day. Hurricane Katrina, the Iraq War, everything was going on. And I'm just going. Man, I want that job. I want to be that photographer to go to any parts of the world and just photograph. I don't care where they send me. I could just be, I'll be happy no matter where I'm at. I could be in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the ocean, doesn't matter. So I went to Point Park University down in Pittsburgh, got my bachelor's degree in photojournalism. There, I, uh, I remember listening to a friend talk about this guy, Randy Parch, in like his last lecture. He's like, this is amazing. You have to check it out on YouTube. And I watched it, and it was one of the most inspirational things. It was all about following your dreams. If you haven't seen it, I recommend after this, go take the hour and a half. It's one of the best things you'll watch. Um, he talked about all about how life puts up walls and that we have to work hard or to jump over the walls because they'll show that we want it and they'll keep those that don't want it out. So um, I will always remember just taking complete utter risks in my photo work. This one time while we were uh, covering Ralph Nader, our, uh, we got stuck in traffic and I convinced my writer to throw, to park the car onto the side of the highway, get out jump the fence, run through the Duquesne tunnels, flag down a university shuttle, and made it to our story the same time that Ralph Nader did and got a one-on-one -on -one interview before anyone else did. So I always say, like, take the risks. Because they'll pay off, and also you have a wonderful story. I know they're still talking about how crazy I am at my old university. Uh, I was lucky enough to be part of two humanitarian aid missions. Uh, my first one was last October when I went down to South America. I went to Guyana and Suriname on Continuing Promise, which is part of the United States' Navy and Department of Defense's humanitarian aid missions to help bring care to those in developing nations throughout South America. Uh, we brought medical, dental, and veterinarian and engineering needs. It was wonderful. I, only had the, I was only there for six weeks, and then we got kicked off the ship in Paramaribo, Suriname, and a bunch of us just looking at each other going, now what? We're stuck here. Thanks a lot. Um, so I, once we got back to the States, I emailed the uh, people at Project COVID, and I said I absolutely loved what I did. 
I want to do this again. And they're like, hey, well, you want to spend six months in the Pacific? Sure, why not? I have nothing going on this summer. So I, uh, I packed my bag, and I jumped on the ship. I jumped on the third oldest ship in the United States Navy, the USS Cleveland, which decommed uh, in September, which was kind of sad, but it was time for her to go. Uh, it was a wonderful mission. We helped out over 38,000 people through the islands of Tonga, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, Timor-Leste, and the Federated States of Micronesia. When I was in, uh, when I was in the Tonga, it was our very first time at a remote medical site, and I got this photo of this, uh, there was these twins that came in, and everyone wanted to deal, hold them, because everyone's been away with, from their family for about six weeks. And so we're all starting to miss family and all this. And then these two twins came in. And everyone wanted to hold them. Everyone wanted just to be there. And I got this one photo of Senior Chief Anna Wood. When I first took this, I didn't think too much of it. The color, the color of it was a bit off. But then I decided to, black, to go black and white with it. And it really popped out the emotion. There, she's no longer a hospital corpsman. She's a mother. You can tell that she misses her kids. That even though that she's thousands of miles away, that they're still connected through this one brief moment. Like Ferris Bueller said, life moves fast. I'm lucky when I can capture the perfect moment at one sixtieth of a second. Because that's what will tell the entire story, is that one one sixtieth of a second. Um, one of my favorite countries I've ever been to is Papua New Guinea. One of the best reasons is because they gave me the spear, this tribe. I mean, I'm a fan of a spear. I'm not going to deny a free spear. I don't think anyone else would. And uh, so we're at this uh, medical site, Tent City, and we had heavy security because there was this big gang war going on between the two police units for who has security control of Tent City. So it makes us all feel so wonderfully safe that, uh, that there's uh, murders happening every day. I remember reading a story about a man that ate a nine-day-old baby alive. I'm like, going, huh, this is going to be a fun country. It turns out it really was because they're very controlled by their emotions. When they're happy, they are the happiest people in the world. When they're not, they'll try to kill you. So I always recommend staying on their best side. Uh, while we were at Tent City, while we were leaving, I saw this one Marine, uh, Lance Corporal uh, Mayweather. And he, he was just gathering around kids and all this stuff. And just the sheer happiness of these people just for us to bring medical care. I was on the bus and like I was getting ready to take a nap because we have to get up at 5 in the morning to go out to some of these sites. And this is roughly at four o'clock in the afternoon and I am dead tired. And I, before completely falling asleep, I saw him around a bunch of kids and I instantly grabbed my camera, jumped off the bus and this shot happened. And, and like I say, like, it's all about capturing the moment and this moment became what Pacific Partnership was all about, was us working together with locals, us being there to help people. That is the best thing I can ever say to anyone, is uh, if some of my photos can actually encourage one of you to help out in your local community, help out in the statewide, even help out worldwide, every little bit makes the difference. And these people, the, the military, all of them, giving up their time and volunteering for this mission, uh, there's nothing more than one could say to actually help out another nation to help them create sustainability, that knowing that they will be able to have a better tomorrow because we did bring the, we built new schools so they'll have better education, that we treated diseases. I remember being in Vanuatu and I, I helped this kid's life. Uh, I, I didn't personally, but I helped out a little by lifting him from one chair to the other. But I was in the surgery room with him and I got to document it and all that. But this uh, next video is going to show you what Pacific Partnership was all about. The Pacific Partnership 2011 team 
visited five island nations, Tonga, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, Timor-Leste, and the Federated States of Micronesia. The medical team was able to treat a total of 38,696 patients during the 142 days of the mission. There were 13,805 adult patients, 9,490 pediatric patients, and 3,379 dental patients treated during Pacific Partnership 2011. Optometry saw 11,931 people and prescribed 21,232 pairs of glasses and sunglasses. The pharmacy provided 32,018 prescriptions. Our dedicated team of veterinarians was able to treat 824 animals. From the very beginning of our mission, we stress that numbers, although important, were not the main thing. The main thing was that we develop effective relationships with the doctors and the nurses of host nation and that we work side by side with them to learn from each other to develop sustainable ways of dealing with the issues that they had in their country. We approached this mission uh, with a whole of government perspective from the very beginning. And so the diverse nature of all the services that we provide are very important to improving the quality of service and the quality of life in the host nation. For example, if the student cannot see well inside of the classroom because there is no lighting, our engineers have brought light to those classrooms. If the students do not stay in the classrooms because they have to go home to use the restroom, our engineers have allowed them to now stay in the classroom because we have restored running water and restroom facilities. And all leading to a healthier child, which our doctors are there to ensure that the quality of care is not only provided to the people of the host nation, but also training their doctors and nurses to provide that care after we depart. The biomedical team tested 270 different pieces of medical equipment and repaired 182 of them. There were 227 engineers from Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 133, the New Zealand Defence Force and Royal Australian Engineers. There was also help from the host nations. There were a total of 22 engineering projects which contributed to a sustainable improvement in the quality of life for the people we work with. I thought I thoroughly understood why the engineering projects were important until I witnessed the Minister of Education in Tonga through tears express her gratitude of what our engineers had done, restoring the roofs to two classrooms that have gone unused for the last two years because of a cyclone that came through the area in 2009. Those students, the future of Tonga, can now go back into those classrooms and learn. The Pacific Partnership team was able to help deliver 257 pallets of donated items throughout the nations we visited. Uh, and Americans are amazing, uh, but not only Americans. All of our partner nations, uh, the Australians, the Japanese, New Zealand, Malaysia, Canada, Spain, all of them were truly amazing in the outpouring of support that they had during this mission. Uh, we are very fortunate uh, to be able to be in a position where we can give uh, and provide this level of support uh, to the countries that we visited. Once again, to whom much is given, uh, much is required. We completed 58 community service projects, which included everything from painting projects to reading to children. There were several successful sporting events ranging from soccer 
volleyball, basketball, softball, football, and rugby. We didn't win every game, uh, but we didn't come there to win every game. We came there to provide assistance to the host nation. To have the military uh, working side by side with our non-governmental organization personnel, this is, this is the way it's going to look during an actual humanitarian assistance mission. So we need to flex that capability and learn how to work together. Our very talented Pacific Partnership Band, which is actually the PAC Fleet Band, had 104 performances, ranging from the elaborate rock band concerts to the musical movement of the brass band. Roughly 64,400 people enjoyed the talents and creativity of some of the Navy's finest musicians. Well, first off, music is the international language, as they say. And our band, the Pacific Fleet Band, is very fluent in that language. And they do it with an accent that all nations appreciate. I can't tell you how phenomenal these guys were during this deployment. My favorite moment, I believe, was when I witnessed 4,000 plus uh, on the field at a concert in Ley, Papua New Guinea. Let me simply say that in my quarter century as a commissioned officer in the U.S. Navy, I have never done anything more fulfilling and worked with a greater group of people that had such selflessness and service as a part of their makeup uh, than the people that I work with here on Pacific Partnership 2011. Thank you.